The museums of Mississauga collections include over 23,000 artifacts, each one reflecting a unique story and important moment in time in Mississauga's cultural history. Here are some of the top unique artifacts from the museum's collection. This one-of-a-kind silver cup can be found in the Anchorage at Bradley Museum. It was given to Captain John Skinner of the British Royal Navy by the people of Malta as a token of respect. After all, Skinner had successfully commanded many convoys while in the Mediterranean. After his retirement, Skinner immigrated to Upper Canada and lived in the Anchorage. A local historian also saved and donated Skinner's original tombstone. Skinner's second tombstone, without spelling mistakes, was made shortly after the first and can be found on his burial plot at St. Peter's Anglican Church. The Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation presented this deerskin scroll to Mayor Robert Speck on January 1, 1968, to commemorate the birth of the new town of Mississauga. As you can imagine, it's very fragile and lives safely in the museum's collection facilities at Beniri's Visitor Center in temperature-controlled rooms. Meet Erica, also known as Easy Rider Information with Computerized Assistance. Long ago, before the era of cell phones and the internet, Erica was located at Square One Shopping Center and connected to a telephone. Transit riders could access information on bus routes through a high-tech computer system placed in Erica and on buses at the time. Sadly, but not surprisingly, Erica didn't last long because of her similarity to another copyright droid. This stone hook was used by the Blower family of Port Credit in the 1850s. Stone hooking was a very common trade in Port Credit, starting in the 1840s. A crew of two or four men would haul stone from the bottom of Lake Ontario with these long-handled hooks. Benerius Historic House was home to four generations of the Benerius family. About 95% of the artifacts inside are original and connected to the Benerius family and their relatives. For example, this cast iron wood stove was installed each fall for the winter months, then dismantled in the spring and stored in the family's barn. This chair-style commode was the first indoor plumbing in the home and could be emptied from outdoors. The bowl held either sand or ashes to cover and mask the, you know, contents. This sideboard was made by J.M. Wingfield Upholsterer and Cabinet Maker, a company established in Toronto. Captain James Beveridge Harris bought the Beniri's house and property in 1836 and drew this picture of the rebuilt house after the fire. In 1897, Arthur Harris created this replica dollhouse of Beniri's for his daughters, Naomi and Annie. Naomi wrote a letter to Santa asking for a larger version of this dollhouse or the money to have one built. Mississauga and the city of Korea, Japan have been twin cities for 40 years. Throughout this time, many different items were presented to the city of Mississauga to honor and celebrate the twinning cities. We have the original agreement created on July 7, 1981, signed by the mayors of Mississauga and Korea at the time. Since the start of the twinning relationship, it is estimated that over 500 people from Korea have visited Mississauga. When the Civic Center was opened in July 1987, two Shishishigira masks were presented to the city of Mississauga. These masks are used to perform the lion dance during the Lunar New Year or other festivals. This is one of 10 ornate embroidered kimonos presented to the city of Mississauga in honor of the opening of the Living Arts Center in 1997. This happy jacket was given to the Mississauga Friendship Association by a group of Japanese delegates from the Korea International Friendship Association. And last but not least, this delicate model of a helmet was given to the city of Mississauga. Known as a kabuto, this would typically be displayed at the Boys Festival in Japan, held on the 5th of May every year. This pressure relief safety valve is from the chlorine tanker of a train that derailed in 1979. It was donated to the museums in 2004 by the Ontario Centre of Forensic Science. Can you believe they'd unknowingly been using it as a doorstop for a number of years? The museums have over 400 photographs and archival items of Hazel McCallion, who was one of the longest serving mayors in Canada. She held her position for 36 years before retiring in 2014. This commemorative plaque was given to Hurricane Hazel in recognition of the one year anniversary of the Mississauga train derailment. To show appreciation for Mayor McCallion's continued support of fire and emergency services, she was presented with this firefighter's helmet. Hazel McCallion was on the cover of the first ever issue of the Mississauga Magazine, which used to be pushed 10 times a year by Metroland Creative Group. This election sign was for the mayoral election of 1978. Hazel ran against Ron Searle, whose slogan was simply, a good mayor. Two weeks before the election, Hazel promoted her own slogan, a better mayor. 
This portrait drawing was created by Gustavo Garzon Romero, a self-taught artist in 2009. The portrait is made entirely out of words and Hazel was thrilled to receive it. These artifacts are just a few of the 18,000 items in the museum's archives. Want to find out even more about Mississauga's history? Head to mississaugaculture.ca slash museums to book tours, view exhibitions and collections, participate in special events, and more. <laughs>